So guys, that was the classic Suzuki Samurai clicky starter. So I've never had it not start, but often it does that clicky business. It does it a few times and then eventually it starts. So today let's uh, try to fix that. First thing I'm gonna do is take this panel off. And on this vehicle, it seems like there's three different types of screws, two different Phillips and a slotted. I suspect the slotted is just a replacement from somebody that lost a screw, but maybe not, I don't know. Ooh, that's dusty. Underneath here, apparently this is what I need to get to here. This is a uh, Phillips screw there. So in order to get to that screw, what I'm gonna use just a Phillips in a quarter inch wrench. Okay, so that screw comes out and then this is the igni ignition switch. So I gotta say though, um, I've never done this before. How did I get the information to do this? Well, it's from watching uh, a video from Highway 83. I'll put a link in the description. So that guy knows way more about Suzuki's than I do. So he's got tons of good videos, uh, you know, and clearly from experience, he knows what he's talking about. So uh, check out that video. And uh, basically I'm just doing what he did, uh, but I'm gonna try it out and see how well it works on this one. But what we have to do now is uh, take this white plastic part off. And then the reason why is to clean the uh, electrical contact on the inside. So this should be filled with some sort of dielectric grease. We're gonna clean it all up, replace the grease, and hopefully that'll help with the uh, clicky starter. There we go. Okay, so yeah, you can see there's a little bit of corrosion on there, or carbon really is what that is. So I'll clean that up. And now on this side, yeah, that looks like that could use a clean as well. Let's see if I can get some light on it. So basically what I'm gonna do is just clean all these contacts, put the switch together, and we'll see how well that works. That's electrical cleaner. Now it's hard to see, but this contact here has a bit of a, it's a bit rounded off. So, by the way, the battery is disconnected. So I'm gonna try to just make them all square, just in case that's affecting the contact. Okay, so that's all nice and clean. And we'll take the other component to the bench. This is the other piece. So there's this copper part on top. And a couple springs underneath. All right, now for this one, I'm gonna hit it with a wire wheel and the polisher. On this copper disc, so I've got it cleaned up pretty well. What you can see though on this contact here, I'll try to get that in the reflection, there is a little indent and presumably that's from uh, is erosion from the contact because on the other side there's no dent there. So it's just a loss of material and maybe that's playing a role 
in the pore contact with the clicky starter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just try to punch from the other side, try to move some material forward, and then polish that smooth. Here's the disc all cleaned up and polished. So these contact points are smoothed out, the uh, divot is out, and I've got it polished. So I'm just going to reassemble it. I'll put some dielectric grease in there, and we'll see how it works. Okay, I've got it all put back together, so let's see how it goes. Still clicking. So the best laid plans of mice and men. I've been driving it for the last uh, week or so, and it's still doing the clicky starter thing. It just doesn't start consistently. So I thought that ignition switch, um, you know, I thought it looked pretty good when I put it back together. Clearly in this case it's not a it's not a contact issue due to grime or uh, cleanliness inside the switch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart again and try to figure out why it's not making better contact. This time I did modify this screwdriver and that should help just make it a bit easier to take that switch apart. Okay, round two. I've got the switch apart again. It came apart uh, uh, easier. So what we're seeing on the switch now, so the two parts of the switch, you can see that one area where it's been arcing there, it's making poor contact. And that corresponds on here as well. So even though it's clean, it's not making good contact there. And there is a little bit of unevenness there, even though I, I tried to level that off on both parts of the switch last time. So I'm going to try to focus on that a bit more. I spent a bit more time working on this disc. And so this is the part here that was originally asymmetric. It had quite a dent in it. So I kind of hammered that back last time and I did it again a bit more just to get it as close as possible and then basically I've just cleaned it up from there. So I think it's pretty pretty level, pretty even. I guess one thing I can do to check that is I'll run it on the file and just make sure it's true all the way across it. Yeah, so not quite perfect. I'll get that perfect and then polish it out again. The other thing I'm going to do though is, so this is inside the switch, there's these three springs that apply upward pressure. And I'm going to stretch them out a bit, I already have actually a little bit, just to try to put a bit more tension on. And the other thing I'm thinking about doing too is adding a stainless spacer just to increase that spring pressure, pushing that disc forward. Because the way this works is, well obviously there's a spring out right now, but that goes in there and then floats floats in there. And that those springs are there so that when you go over the, the, the other part of the switch, when it makes contact, this kind of floats forward and back. So anyway, the goal is to increase that spring pressure. Make it all flat, put it back together and see what happens. I ended up putting the washer in there as a spacer just to build that extra spring pressure 
And then this clicked together uh, fine, no troubles there. I am a bit concerned that it might be all a bit tight with that spacer. The battery is disconnected right now. And when I test it, it seems pretty reasonable. So it's got the detent. I think that's actually the, uh, the little ball in there. But um, it rotates freely. So I'm going to put it back together and we'll see how that goes. Okay, that bodes well. So again, again, I've got this nice and level on the three contact points. I had to put some solder in there just to build that up a bit because it was getting some cracks. I'm going to take the spacer out and uh, the reason why is I'm wondering if there's too much play inside the switch. And when the spacer is in there, it just raises, so this tang locks into this tang locks into that notch there, and when it turns, that's what turns this copper contact around. I was wondering if there's too much wiggle there, and there's not really much, but maybe when it was up higher from the spacer, maybe that's what was causing that there. So if I bring it back, back down, maybe that'll help. Maybe I need to build up that tang a bit. It's really not much though. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to try to do now is take the play. So keep it level, take the play out of the switch, see if that helps. Okay, now we're getting a bit crazy. So, on the theme of maybe there's too much slack in inside the switch, I thought, well, what if I increase the pad width of the starter contact? So that, incidentally, is this one. So what I did is I took some solder, and you can see where the copper, hopefully you can see that, where the copper ends there, and I just put some solder on the outside of it. So basically just built up this pad a little bit more. So now I have an about, well it's about a millimeter and a half wider pad on the starting contact there. These are all again level. So I'm going to uh, once again reassemble the switch and hopefully that made a difference. Uh, just incidentally about this, you know, expanding this contact out uh, does have the potential hazard of making that make contact when you don't want to. So if you made it too wide, you could engage the starter, um, well, worst case scenario is without trying to on the key. So anyway, one and a half millimeters there, I think that'll be a safe margin. What I'm going to do is essentially make a spring out of this silicone. So this is uh, basically just a piece of silicone rubber that I've had lying around as spacers or whatever. So I'm going to carve this down into a donut, try to get the thickness about right. And the hope is that it'll provide kind of a constant uh, even spring force across that whole disc. We'll see if that helps. So that's the Neo Spring, and uh, I might have to experiment with the thickness of it, but that seems to be okay. 
So when the contact thing comes on, there's some reasonable recoil there. If I can get five in a row, I'm gonna call it fixed. That's three. Four. Five. Okay, well that's as good as it's ever been. Bonus. Alright, so this clicky starter turned into a bit more work than I expected it would be. But I think I've got it. It's certainly better. Hopefully it's pretty much fixed. Getting the switch in and out, that's actually really easy. Especially with that bent Phillips. That turned into a two minute job to get it uh, in and out. So that part is really easy. Access to it is really easy. Now what actually helped it get better? Number one, definitely having the contacts clean. I think that's really important. That's the bare minimum. Having the contacts level and smoothed and uh, completely like a, a level surface for all the contacts, I think that's probably important. What are the other ones? So having a constant pressure spring, maybe that helped. And then having a slightly wider uh, contact uh, button basically for the uh, starter circuit. Uh, maybe that helped as well. But basically putting them all together it seemed to work. That took uh, quite a few tries though to get it better. Obviously I'm just kind of limping this switch through. I have another one ordered. As soon as I receive it I probably will replace that switch with the new one. But anyway that's it for now. Thanks for watching.